fate of Thailand's opposition Future Forward Party hangs in the balance. Protesters have clashed in the Thai capital Bangkok during a third straight day of anti-government demonstrations. Protests in Bangkok are demanding curbs to the king's powers. That's remarkable because the Thai constitution says the king has to be held in a position of revered worship. If you've been watching the news and scrolling around social media, chances are you've already heard about the series of protests happening in Thailand. Just recently, thousands of protesters took over the streets of Bangkok, taking over many of the city's key intersections and calling out the reforms for the monarchy and the abolition of dictatorship. This is a notable feat considering that for the first time in history, the people are openly going against the authority of the Thai monarchy. The protests are targeted toward the government of Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha. Majority of the protesters are students and the youth, and it is interesting to note that they have no overall leader, which brings us to several questions. What triggered the protests? What changes are the protesters fighting for? And what do they wish to happen? And how will these protests impact Thai society as a whole? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about on today's video. Let's dive into why the protests are happening in Thailand and why the protesters took over the streets of Bangkok. This is Business Explained. To learn more about all things money, get educated about how to do business, become business savvy, and enjoy more videos like these, subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell, and may you be granted with many, many sweet returns. So what's happening in Thailand? We can trace it all the way back to June 2019. Currently, Thailand is under the reign of King Maha Vajira Longkorn, the only son of the late King Pumipala Duliadev and Queen Sirikit Kiriakara. On the 9th of June 2019, the king endorsed Peru Chan Ocha as the nation's prime minister. However, Peru Chan Ocha had actually led the Royal Thai Armed Forces to stage a coup several years back on the 22nd of May 2014. He had been the commander of the Royal Thai Army after the nation underwent six months of political crisis. They established a military junta, or a committee of military officials, which it had dubbed the National Council for Peace and Order. This body was what gave Prime Minister Peru Chan Ocha his power and elected him as the country's new prime minister. Now let's go back to 2019. On the 20th of November 2019, the Constitutional Court disqualified Thanathorn Wan Gran Kit as a member of the parliament upon grounds of violating electoral law. This led to several thousand protesters rallying against the disqualification of Thanathorn. However, the protests heightened on the 21st of February 2020 when the Constitutional Court banned the Future Forward Party. The political party that Thanathorn and his colleague Pia Botarxayang Kanakul had founded. Thanathorn was outspoken and the party aimed to restrain and refine how the military used their powers in Thai politics, improve socio-economy conditions in the country, and decentralize the bureaucracy. It is said that the banning of the Future Forward Party back in late February was what sparked the 2020 protests. The next day after the party's dissolution, hundreds of people protested the government's decision. However, as we all know, the coronavirus pandemic led to the creation of initiatives limiting travel and mass gatherings in an effort to curb the virus's spread. On the 26th of March, Thai authorities declared a state of emergency. What happened next were a series of protests that had one overarching theme, reform for the monarchy. On the 18th of July, the Free Youth Group led about 2,500 people in a protest for the dissolution of the parliament, constitutional amendment, and to put a stop to the harassment of critics of the government. On the 3rd of August, Arnon Nampa, a human rights lawyer, called for reform on the monarchy. A week later, on the 10th of August, students from the Thammasat University called for reform of the monarchy, listing down 10 demands, one of which was the abolition of the law that made it illegal to criticize the king. On the 16th of August, a massive protest of over 10,000 people occurred at Bangkok's Democracy Monument. A month later, on the 19th of September, Thailand saw its biggest demonstration since the 2014 coup. Tens of thousands of citizens protested calling for reforms to the monarchy and the removal of Peru Chan Ocha from his position. And the protests have only escalated from there. This now brings us to the month of October, in which Thailand has seen its most active consecutive days of protests. 
Protesters have taken to going to the government locations to demand Peyrit Chanacha's removal from his position. In response, the government issued a ban on gatherings with more than five individuals. Prayut had paraphrased one of Buddha's teachings saying, Don't be careless, because people can die today or tomorrow. Do not trifle with the powerful Grim Reaper. Which people took as a threat. Thousands of people defied this ban and took to the streets to continue their protests. The police retaliated by using water cannons on the protesters in an attempt to disperse the protests. Students and youth took to social media to call for awareness of their situation, declaring that what the police were doing was cruel. That's why on the 18th of October, tens of thousands of citizens participated in various anti-government demonstrations across the streets of Bangkok and in other parts of Thailand. Such demonstrations have persisted in spite of the arrests of protesters, of which there have been about 80 detained in total, the water cannons, the lockdowns, and the ongoing pandemic. The Prime Minister's spokesman talked about how Prayut feared how big the protests have gotten and how they could be used by troublemakers who wanted to cause trouble. On the 22nd of October, Thailand's Prime Minister revoked the emergency measures that the government had imposed in Bangkok. This is what Chana Cha had to say. The protesters have made their voices and views heard. As a leader of the nation who is responsible for the welfare of all Thais, whether they be protesters or silent majority with whatever political convictions, I will make the first move to de-escalate this situation. The support for Thailand's protests have also come from other nations, with the hashtag StandWithThailand trending on social media platforms of users across the globe. Claudio Sopranzetti, an assistant professor in anthropology at the Central European University, wrote this in his article for Al Jazeera on the subject matter. After a week of daily protests springing up across Bangkok and the rest of the country, what happens next is uncertain. Regardless of what the short-term consequences of these mobilizations will be, those verbal attacks against the monarch, which have become the new normal, represent an epochal shift for the country. It entails the surprising and sudden disintegration of monarchy hegemony, a political ideology that has dominated Thailand since the Cold War. Now, much like the Berlin Wall, which once symbolized that cold conflict, the whole edifice of monarchical authority is coming down, reminding us that even a seemingly stable political structure can collapse at any moment. What are your thoughts on the Thai protests? What do you think they can lead to in the future? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'll be replying to all of you who comment within the first hour. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely check out my other video called The Rise and Fall of the Hertz Corporation. Vehicles have been a part of human life ever since the first steam-powered automobile capable of transporting humans from one place to another was built by Nicholas Joseph Cugnot back in 1769. From that point on, vehicles technology was refined and developed to bring us today's modern car. Cars became widely used worldwide. And while the exact number is a little difficult to pinpoint, by 2016 there was an estimated 1.30 billion vehicles on roads across the globe. Can you imagine how difficult it would be to travel without using a car? They help make traveling from point to point much more convenient. However, having a car was not always as common as it is today. There were fewer cars available on the market, and fewer still could afford to buy their own as they were pretty pricey back then. The solution? Car rentals. Well, that's probably what the founder of the Hertz Corporation thought when he first put up the company. For a while, the business was great. Hertz probably cemented itself as the most iconic car rental company in America. However, people were taken by surprise when the company filed for bankruptcy not too long ago. When you hear about the reason behind it, Hertz is right. What happened to Hertz Corporation? What led to the company's demise? What's happening to Hertz Corporation right now? And what will happen to it in the future? That's exactly what we're going to be talking about in that video. So check it out and let's dive into the rise and fall of the Hertz Corporation. Stay tuned, stay educated.